Hello everyone, welcome to the Spacing Out Podcast. My name is Josh. We're starting off this uh, episode with a cool with a little segment called Tinfoil. So the government has postponed the release of the JFK documents. Um, which they're supposed to release, which means that that like information on, on that they have on his assassination likely affects people who are still living today, which is wild to think about because it means it still has real world impact and they're not releasing them. So they even released the alien info. They won't release that. Interesting thing to think about. Now let's talk about crypto. Okay, so, well, let's actually, let's actually real quick cover some mania that's been going across the internet. People think that meta is going to take over the metaverse. Uh, You know, they think Facebook has dominance. I strongly disagree with this um, sentiment. There's too many players. There's too much going on in this space. Yes, I know Oculus is cheap. It'll get people used to using it. But I'm not even completely positive how successful that will be. We did share in the uh, Discord this. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, they got a new Twitter advertisement. And this. Uh, here's, here's what this looks like. It says. Cardio that doesn't suck is ready. Quest is ready. Tell me, who wants to do aggressive cardio with that on their face? Not me. No way. I can barely even do over-the-head headphones. You want me to put a whole freaking thing on my face and then sweat extensively? I'm going to assume that this is going to be like, like we Fit, where it's like... <laughs> I don't think I'll finish that. I might offend a lot of people, but <laughs> I am extremely skeptical of this concept um, because you're going to want people like me who work out every single day and will extensively use it to using it. And I will not, I will probably, I will be shocked if I enjoy using that even a little bit. So, uh, yeah, just something to keep in mind. So that's because that's their way in the universe of the metaverse, and then they also have the office stuff. But I think a lot of this will most likely suck when it first comes out, and it's gonna we're gonna need to rely on the gaming more of the gaming side of things to get adoption because the gaming side is who has all the users right now. Facebook, Facebook, yeah. I'm extremely skeptical, especially since cryptocurrencies will decentralize everything. If Facebook decides not to decentralize, they'll likely just completely go out of business. Um, it'll just be a matter of time. Uh, but if they do to decentralize and they keep with the branding, I think they could do really well. All right. So now that's out of the way. It's been a while since we talked about crypto, and there's a lot of reasons why. One of them was because I wanted to do a big briefing after the November um, meeting, because there was a big, uh, in New York City, uh, face-to-face, everyone gathered to talk about cryptocurrencies and NFTs, and I was super curious on getting uh, of getting the vibe of what that was going to be like. I hope uh, this is picking up all right. So... The first thing that I thought was really interesting after hearing people talk about how it went was everyone everyone was talking about how wild it was. Like there was lines across the street, people waiting overnight and not only like waiting overnight but like chanting for like 6 hours straight cuz they were so excited. And um Everyone was really surprised by this. Like, wow, this is so cool. And I'm like, I mean, I've been, we've been looking at the adoption number. I can't help but think, like, we've been looking at the adoption numbers. We've been hearing about how explosive it is. There's like 2.4 or 24.5 million developers on Ethereum alone. Like, we knew it was going to be massive. And 
everyone still seems like very shocked about the real life thing, which is kind of ironic because a lot of these people are, you know, connected to the metaverse and their whole thing is like, we'll never go outside again or see each other again. It's like, man, and the first time you guys go outside and see each other, you absolutely lose it. So are you sure? <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it's just, it's very stark contrast and people's excitement pre and post the event. Which is interesting to me. It was very interesting to me because I've 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 wondered how that will actually play out. And one of the things that I that I think could be occurring is um, there could be a rebound and actually going out to stores and stuff, and that might get more attractive at the same time that the metaverse gets more attractive. Like we could see a revamp in like retail shopping uh, as these places get more creative on how to get people to actually get into the store, um, and then it might be. You know, that might be disruptive to like Instacart and stuff too as well. But maybe that gets a lot of that gets delayed because of the shortage issues. Who knows how all that plays out. We're focused on crypto right now. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of the crypto co- projects were super cool. Everyone had a blast. It was massive, huge. The space is still ramping up. Bitcoin, I think, hit 66 at one point. Ethereum is currently at 47. Uh, Ethereum is probably sitting below 10% short right now, by the way. Um, And that is, yeah. This could squeeze up very easily from here. And it's pretty huge that that's occurring. Um, And, okay, so the big thing that was this, and, and it's wild to see that because in November kind of the big talk with Solana as a Ethereum competitor. Now keep in mind that well, like I mentioned earlier, Ethereum has, you know, over 24 million developers on it. You have that's their moat, right? You you got to get at least like if you get a million uh, developers on your cryptocurrency, you, you know, it sounds like really impressive and really great, but it's still so far behind, right? So Ethereum's just so, so massive. They have such a huge lead on everyone else. Um, but Solana is so much quicker. Uh, now you have to see if Solana can have the same functionality and everything as Ethereum. Um, it, 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 it's showing some. It's definitely picking up. It picked up a, quite a bit of interest and that has been reflected in the uh, price increase. I'm also in the developers discord actually, which is very cool because um, a lot of these coins have these discords. Um, I'm actually hunting for it right now. There it is. And they put everything in here. It's a massive discord that's very like, it's very like, whoa, when you get in there because it's just so much information because they literally put everything in here. Um, Like all the technical side and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> there's a guy in here named deleted user that really threw me off. Um, so it's really interesting to read through that stuff. It's also really fun to go through all these NFTs that also usually have their own discords. I'm in I'm in like a hundred and forty something servers, um, and I, I mean I've talked to I've talked to kids that are multi millionaires, and it's wild because. Um, they're just like hanging out in the chat or even a lot of these artists will um, will like put a phone number in there and you could literally call them. And I, I do call them and it's I, I think I might even mention this in a podcast just because I've been doing it for a minute because it's so much fun um, just to meet with these people and talk to them about the space and uh, everything that they've been venturing into and, and been working on and what they're looking at and what even their day to day is like. Um, it's fascinating. So, yeah, so Lana's really cool for all those reasons. And then uh, we recently did a bunch of d- updates in the Discord about Cardano. And uh, I really like Cardano. And I've mentioned that I really like Cardano before. We did some more digging. Uh, this was made by the co founder of Ethereum. And if they understand, now, like, we're going to cover some of this stuff in the class. We're having a cryptocurrency class on November 14th, um, where we're going to talk about uh, the more... Actually, let me just go ahead and bring it up 
right here. So I put it on the Facebook, and then on Monday I'll put it up on Twitter, and then I'm also going to upload it to LinkedIn. And let me see. Sorry, first time using a computer <laughs> here. Oh, and we also have an open sea page and we will be creating NFTs. I'll actually be creating NFTs on several different accounts. I've already created some, but um, I've put up I've uploaded songs. Uh, let me see here. On Oh you see I didn't even see how they set this up. I don't like that at all. Okay, well, I'll have to change how this is set up, but we're gonna talk about uh, what is a blockchain. I'm actually gonna get into the technical side, the engineering of what blockchain is. I'm gonna cover what proofs are, and then uh, cover some of the big proofs and how those function. Uh, and then I'm gonna talk about the different applications of NFTs in a little bit more detail so people can understand. And I'm gonna talk about the different places to trade them, where the biggest places to trade them are. And then afterwards will be time for some Q&A. Okay, so then that's going to be on uh, November 14th at 7 p.m. And uh, we did a poll in the Discord, and if we get enough feedback, I'll do multiple uh, times on that as well. Um, and going back to Ethereum, um, well, and I'll cover Cardano more in there. So I just wanted to touch on that, though, that I really do like Cardano. Um, it is technically ahead of Ethereum, but like 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 all of the cryptocurrencies have to deal with is Ethereum has this huge moat because of all the developers that are on it. So, um, but Cardano has a lot of functionality that Ethereum doesn't have, and it doesn't. It also doesn't need to be staked. But actually, the fact that Ethereum staked is helping it a lot right now. So, uh, it's kind of hard to call that a negative at the moment because it's very profitable. <laughs> with this uh, squeeze i have no i there is still some estimates that have not changed for about ten thousand uh and i'm pretty sure there's still like twenty thousand and speculation on higher than that going into next year which would which is wild uh to think about you might even see people like push from bitcoin to ethereum um but we'll see people are crazy about the bitcoin so uh, and then for NFT projects, we're seeing more and more and more legitimate artists enter the space. Um, one of the ones that was super cool that uh, got dropped on Saturday, we were actually going to stream and buy some of them. And uh, that just didn't happen because everyone's busy and because uh, they, ended up, they ended up having a set time, but then dropping it early and... Uh, a bunch of the prices spiked, and I was just disinterested at that point. But that was the Star Wars NFT collection by the guy who was given the rights to make the Stormtrooper costumes. And so they sold, like, a bunch of helmets, and um, that was pretty cool. They sold for, like, a several thousand each, each NFT did. Um, and so that was that's a pretty cool thing. Um, I think it would have been cool to have one, but... Um, even just being aware of these things is cool enough. Uh, and there's lots of other crypto. I pinged, I pinged about the Squid Games NFTs and the Discord. By the way, I'm pinging the ones that I think are especially cool in the Discord. And I pinged that one. Then it went up 27 or 2,700% the next day. And then a bunch of drama happened afterwards. So all of that was wild. There was another NFT project we shared that was just a bunch of words. And then later, uh, it was supposed the words were supposed to relate to items that were going to be made in a game. Okay, except everyone bought up all the words, which ended up going for ridiculous prices. Like I, I, I think I remember reading like an average of like thirty thousand a word. So you know, ludicrous. And um, what they ended up doing, the 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 creators were then like, uh, yeah, we're not actually we didn't we don't want to make this game. And so they just open sourced it. Now they're open source making the game. And uh, that is, should be, I, I don't know what to think of that. <laughs> That's a, this, that is a lot like the things that happened in the dot-com bubble, except uh, with new technology, we can just work around a lot of the issues that existed back then. So 
It's very interesting to think about. And that also brings uh, me to the crypto gaming. I think the crypto gaming is picking up pace rapidly. And I think it's going to be really, really cool um, how this plays out, especially since all the games that they're making in this space mimic popular games that exist now. So they're, they're even, they're playing the game. They're playing the game well, I feel like. That said, I haven't played all the games. Or, uh, I've played one out of, I don't actually don't even know how many there are. Other than I, I am in these discords and they, they grow rapidly. So, interest is there. People are definitely taking part and uh, enjoying them. So, that brings us to... Yeah, the energy cri- crisis is upon us. Crypto is going wild. People keep messaging me about Shiba. People keep getting into brokers I've never heard of, NFT brokers I've never heard of, buying coins I've never heard of. The space is endless, um, and the proofs are endless. And a lot of this is becoming a more psychological thing. Uh, philosophical, not psychological. Well, it's it's psychological in the fact that almost everything in this space trades off technical analysis, which measures, which is like a psychology of money in a lot of cases. Um, but the and, and uh, the extent at which that correlation is true is pretty dramatic as well. Like it's very t- tightly correlated with technical analysis. And the, I guess the only thing that would probably maybe be more debatable is on the cycle. Although I've had no trouble timing the cycle. Now, I'm not going to assume that that's just because I'm so awesome. But uh, it does make me wonder what some of these hedge fund managers are even looking at that they're not timing the cycle. Has this been off the whole time? Wait, what in the world? Oh, I must have paused it. Um, so... How'd that throw me off track? It's always worse when then you think about how did you, yeah. I, I started thinking about how did I get thrown off track, which just drew me further off track. But I was talking about, um, yes, yeah, so the trading is psychological and then the actual Applications of the coins seem to be deviated from different philosophical concepts of how governance, governance and how economics should function. And, and very interesting conversations are sprouting up. One of the ones that really sticks out to me is the one that makes this stop doing stop stopping. And, um, <laughs> one of the one of the interesting narratives that really sticks out with me is one that stems from Mike Green, and this happened about a week ago. I've been sitting on it, really giving it some thought, and it's been an interesting conversation. Um, oh, by the way, l- let me just deviate real quick from that and just say that the conversation that isn't interesting to me at all is this inflation deflation conversation. If someone starts talking about inflate def- inflation and deflation affecting cryptocurrencies just go la 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 because this conversation is not going to matter at all in three years therefore it does not matter at all in general because cryptos will be allowed longer than that so if there's any any price action effect because of this short-term issues that are occurring you just ignore it you if you can buy more you buy more if you can't I mean, just you just hold it. Like these things don't these things don't matter to crypto, right? The only thing that matters to crypto is the adoption rate. Is it being used? Will its application change at all because of shortage issues, or because of inflation, or deflation, or because of an energy crisis? Energy crisis is an interesting concept, but that that also seems like it would create. Um. 
a shortage issue which could cause price inflation and then that price inflation that could cause a crash which then causes a buying opportunity which then goes back to adoption curve which is the only thing that ever matters okay so anyways this the this other narrative that's going on that i'm very interested in is uh whether bitcoin is big dog and um it's interesting because the main person that I keep following that's very anti-Bitcoin, one of the only ones who is consistently coming up with arguments that actually hold my attention is Mike Green. And he's probably not the only one that thinks of it. And you got to, I also, you also have to consider it, he's big friends with um, like David Einhorn and um, that's, that's the miracle worker who traded his way perfectly through the dot-com bubble. Um, first guy to, point out deep value before those stocks started blowing up. Um, I mean, he's a very insightful and Mike Green's interesting character who's just wickedly intelligent uh, and a economic historian as well. So it, which makes, which he's part of the reason why I am so, why I did start paying attention to historical trends and stuff so much because he is yeah there's no one actually quite as sharp as him on that stuff no one even seems to come close which is very interesting there's some younger guys who don't have a name for themselves yet but he's also the uh, founder of uh, simplified hedge fund Uh, so you know he's also got a track record to back him up and his pitch stance his hypothesis is that um, the gold standard never worked when we did it. And that what we will likely find is that Bitcoin won't work because it's like it'll be like the gold standard. And what will happen is most of the people will end up with most of the Bitcoins and then they'll just sit on them and never spend them. And they'll use different um, because, the, the, you know, when you're when you're rich, you don't spend your money. You spend other people's money. Right. Um, and I guess, so like he was asking things like, so we, how do you tax it? Um, how would that function? Okay. How do you track the taxes? And there's a, 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 the conversation becomes really complex. You can go back and forth lots of ways. You know, if the, it, the big thing that stands out to me is that he was attacking the idea that people pitch Bitcoin as like a utopia, basically. And utopias don't exist. And um, I was really sitting on that. You have to think that there's got to be something better because it's hard to compare it to the gold standard because the gold standard still had all these complexities to it but in that regard it actually does make it like the gold standard because it also has lightning chain and stuff built on top of it i guess the thing that would really change is the fact that block the blockchain also holds an additional functionality because it is like a chronological order of uh, events that have occurred in time and is also unhackable but you could argue that we already track time to probably what many would consider necessary, but also um, that gold could be hidden and, and, and just as viable as a, a as a medium of exchange. And I, I would just, I don't like gold in the long term. I've already iterated that in past podcasts, so I'm not going to reiterate that now, but uh, it does make me ponder on Bitcoin, just philosophically. Like, uh, does it actually work if you if you have a limited supply and you do have the potential for? I mean, you can't take someone's Bitcoin too, but you like they'll likely come up with new products in the future that make that more difficult. Now, this funny thing happens though when if you let's say had a nefarious state. Um, that wanted to get a hold of something you had and then you made it more difficult 
Um, historically, what that usually turns into is they're quicker to become more violent. Um, because governments have a monopoly on force. And uh, if they want to get something done and you fight them on it, they will use their force. And the harder you make it for them to get it, the more forceful they'll get. So we've seen that with like China and stuff when the people uh, push back on, on things that they've been forced. They just get more forceful. Um, so that is something to consider that Mike Green was pitching. And he was saying that the solution will most likely be uh, some of the cryptocurrencies that the Federal Reserve is currently working on. Um, and they are working on on a few different ideas and concepts. And his pitch is that these concepts will also still service the other parts of of the uh, other areas of the world that are more in need of cryptocurrencies so they can run their businesses like in Africa and stuff. Although even as I now, you know, now this is actually helpful because I'm actually thinking, um, I guess the argument that wasn't given the argument, I don't want to call it an argument. The conversation that was had between uh, Mike Green and Alex Gladstone, um, which Alex Gladstone is, um, a humane rights, director or leader and um he's a big bitcoin advocate and he was a little mismatched with uh a wickedly a wickedly intelligent economist but he did well um for what he was tasked with um but boy could you tell he was nervous um i guess the thing that he didn't come at mike green with was that was because they well they were hyper focused on Bitcoin, but Bitcoin isn't the only cryptocurrency, right? Because Cardano actually fills in a lot of the things that Bitcoin misses, um, and just like a lot of the other coins do. And then you have the Lightning Network. Bitcoin isn't really the utopia at that point, right? But it's it doesn't need to fill all the holes it just needs to be the baseline for everything and i guess that he still doesn't like it when prefer some sort of u.s variance that allows for still some canadian effects to which most people don't like although yeah i guess what really just doesn't sit well with me is i read the comments on that conversation and i read the comments on a lot of these uh, conversations. There's someone pro and Bitcoin and someone not. Um, I like cryptocurrencies. I like the science. I like the innovation. I like the uh, applications and the utility that it brings. I don't like a lot of the community. Um, they're very immature and very arrogant. Um, it's just part of the immaturity in a lot of ways, especially when I read these conversations. Um, it, even, even you know, some of the things that Alex was dismissive of with Mike Green, it's, um, it just bothers me. It doesn't sit well with me. It's like you're talking to someone who's got, you know, three dec you know, over three decades of uh, expertise in research. And you're being awfully dismissive of the ideas he's pitching, despite the fact that, you know, this isn't like arguing with someone like who's Peter Schiff, right? This is arguing with someone who's consistently coming up with new economic theories that are proven to be true and has uh, um, built a well-deserved reputation that, that uh, proceeds him. So... There's a different level of respect there, and everyone's so quick to dismiss it. That just kind of worries me. Um, Cause this isn't, he is not, he's not the, he's not the only one. He's just the most prominent one, but it's important to remember that he's not like a Warren Buffett. 
And, and I'm also so focused on this because people are what's going to keep you. It, it, there's too much for one person to learn. I could give you my opinion on these things, but I need to bounce my opinion off these great people who've been in it forever to really get a feel for it. All right. And then I take that content and then try to put it together here and also try to put my mind together when I think about it. Um, because, yeah, it's like, I don't know, I probably watched. 30 hours of video and lectures and then probably another 10 hours of reading before making this podcast even and um i mean just a lot of that's nonsense there's so much to read through there's so much to go through there's so many different projects and so much going on and it's a lot it's a lot to get through but yeah i liked i like I liked the the thought provoking ideas that they put forth. I think Mike Green's got a very interesting opinion. I he still has a lot of concern around the fact that we don't know who, um, you know, Satoshi is, and that could in the future be a problem. You know what? A lot of these countries, these third world countries, do is they use uh, the cryptocurrencies to grab a hold of U.S. dollars. And so a lot of the times, um, and I think I think it was even mentioned in the conversation that Tether was one of the most popular um, cryptocurrencies right now, and, and lots of people want to get Tether, and they're just doing that and just flipping it right away to uh, dollars because everyone still wants dollars, um, which is good to keep in mind because it, it also shows how much higher the adoption could go. Um, because it's still, it's, yeah, it's still so early. I also, yeah, I might reach out and see if I can, uh, have a conversation or just interview with Mike Green. Um, everyone's so big on debates in this space. Um, Yeah, I, I guess it's just these, like, this is on Blockworks, there's another, Bankless is the other one, they always have, these, these they always want to have debates, I don't understand, why always debates, also, why always, there are always so many people in the comments that are like, oh, these people are being civil and, and not throwing personal attacks at each other, wow. Why is it, do you people go around arguing with people in your day to day life all the time? I don't understand why. I don't understand why that's like the number one comment on every single podcast that I watch these days. Um, yeah, you guys need to stop watching main, like mainstream news media for real. Uh, <laughs> because you shouldn't be that shocked by like the basic, basic basic decency in, in conversational skills uh i guess uh but yes apparently that's a mind-boggling thing these days which is odd and then they were talking about different governments the way they've also banned the use of gold and stuff as well in that conversation and uh i've talked in previous cover in previous podcasts to the people i follow you uh and and what they had the, to offer and the different ideas um, and just piecing that all together I think that's pretty much caught up on where the narrative's at everyone's pretty much focused on Cordano and Solana and Ethereum and, and Bitcoin um, I still think that the coins related to uh, uh, storage like Filecoin or um, I'm pretty sure there's a store coin I think those are likely um, under not giving a close a close enough look. Oh, Axie is one of the gaming ones I really like. Yeah, so Ethereum is my largest position, followed by Bitcoin, followed by Solana, followed by Cardano. Uh, well, Solana and Cardano are even in their positioning. And then... Uh, I hold a bunch of small coins now too. The last eight percent of my portfolio is just all just a massive mix of small coins, but and they have twelve percent Bitcoin right now. So I'm definitely diversified out 
uh, may, uh, about 42% Ethereum right now as well. So, oh, on um, yeah, and I still like, I like, I like all the storage coins. I got a good mix of them. Um, because I think that, I think that technology is going to be a lot going to sneak up on us. I think it already has utility today. And I think it are, I think it will quickly displace. I kind of see it as like, uh, um, Like going from, well, I just actually thought of way too many ideas at once. I guess the one I'm going to stick with is like going from a cassette tape to like a CD. Uh, or maybe it would be like, yeah, I think that's about right. Yeah. And then you quickly go to uh, MP3 and streaming. I think that's the type of progression that's going to happen with uh, cloud storage. And I think cloud storage is going to quickly just like phase out, just like cassettes did, uh, at least the corporate style. And I think it'll go on the blockchain and then and then get decentralized. Or maybe maybe that turns into like an Etsy style business or something um, and just coexists. Which, by the way, the uh, during all the storage stuff, Etsy killed it. Um, but we're not talking about markets. We're talking about crypto. Wow. <laughs> Spaced out there. Um, yeah, you know what? I think that about covers it for today's episode. Let me just make sure I got through everything I wanted to. Yeah, so just uh, cover some stuff about the server real quick. I created a separate channel for the live streams just to have less clutter when people first get into the Discord. Uh, I'm going, I'm, I'm working through, so there's a calendar page that's up right now. And actually, you know what? I'm going to set this to private for now as I finish up, um, assigning this bot, I was going to set up a public calendar so that people can see, um, the streaming, we're setting out a public streaming set schedule and then the classes in the future. And then, um, I'm thinking beginning of next year. Yeah, at some point in the beginning of next year, um, start to do mentorships one on one. There's gonna be a lot of projects going on, but we'll see if we can bring that out as well. If not, we'll just uh, do more regular classes, and then we'll also diversify the classes out. That actually might end up be what we're doing because our, our growth's doing pretty well. And as far as growth goes, for the server, we've grown by thirty percent in two weeks. Server activity is up over 300% in those two weeks. And we have added um, Holy cow, we've added uh, 45 channels. Yeah, this is going really well actually. Oh, our, and our Instagram's growing well. Excellent. And we have some new subscribers, so that's great. Um, Continue to build into the educational portion. I'm a little behind on getting some of that stuff uploaded. Um, but we're getting caught up. This, this video is one of the getting caught ups. There's lots of projects, lots of things going on. Um, this is also why it's so hard to keep track of the crypto space because there's just, I mean, it's just um, ever moving. I also should mention that China went back on their original ban but there's nothing really to say. Well, China made an announcement to the people about a petition for whether they should bring back mining. Now, whether that was done with the wholehearted intent to actually go back on what they said, or if it was done to appease the people, um, who knows? Because they have, they have an energy problem. And so I don't even sure they could bring back mining even if they wanted to. Um, and their energy problem is also everyone's energy problem, by the way. So, um, yeah, don't miss our Nobel show if you want to know more about that. Okay, so um, more classes in the future. We've updated the help section. We've updated some of the bots. I have someone working on the website, and so we're gonna have text alerts soon. 
And then we're also working on adding a crypto section to the trade tracker. And then I'm going to be doing a video on how to play earnings calls. And don't forget about the class on uh, November 14th. And make sure to check us out. And then uh, next week, we're going to start uploading our TikToks. Um, so check us out on TikTok at Nobel Trading. Uh, you might have noticed that we also changed our YouTube page to NBT Official. We may be doing the same thing with our Instagram account. I'm not sure yet. Um, but keep an eye out for that. Uh, I think there's a band or something that has MBT official taken on some places though. But we did that on the YouTube just so that, um, yeah. Just so we can more, be more expansive because we're gonna end up covering a lot more topics than just uh, trading. As you can already tell, because we we are already expanded out on the uh, general education, and lots of the educational channels will be added out. So I I'm going to finish probably. Okay, that, I'll go ahead and add this. I'm going to be in hyper production mode for the educational part of the Discord. I'm gonna try and knock out a massive chunk of the educational part of the Discord uh this month starting well yeah um and because of that i will likely not be doing a newsletter for this month and um for all the new people uh i do a newsletter but it probably won't be this month because i'm going to be hyper focused on getting some of this educational content and done out of the way because um once that's caught up to what i uh I don't know, it'll never be actually caught up to like everything that I know, but it needs to be more caught up so that you can have that good baseline. And then I can say, okay, that's at a good point. And then update it as markets change with whatever theories are going on or whatever major topics come up, um, which is kind of what I was doing at, at the get go. You know, everyone's like, what's a gamma squeeze? And I was like, oh, I can make a float chart for that um, flow chart. I think it sounded like I said float chart. Um, yeah, and so uh, as I build that educational portion, we might lag on the YouTube videos and stuff, or continue to, um, but that should get uploaded soon. The count, um, or will, I'll be slamming that out this month. So, to recap, class on November 11th, November 14th, Check us out on the social medias. I'll be doing that earnings report video. We'll be uploading the calendar. Please check out the polls in the Discord. Let me know what you think. Check out our updated shop. We do have the free trial for the Contender uh, membership now. And I will be slamming through the educational portion of the Discord this month uh, at a pace that we have not seen yet. So get ready for that. Um, that's about it. Thank you, everyone, for coming by, checking us out, following the social medias, all the new people in the server. I'm so happy to have you. Um, we have got a busy week. If you're in the Containers Club, we've got a busy week, lots of economic data, lots of things going on. Make sure you check out the Nails Gloves show, and I will see you all on Monday.